Hello fellow humans. Today's video is sponsored by none other than my friend Derek from moreplatesmoredates.com. Him and I have done two podcasts so far, one more to come. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. And it's specifically sponsored by their brand new energy drinks. These things have stuff in them that other energy drinks in the market do not have, such as a thousand milligrams of L-tyrosine, the dopamine precursor, a hundred milligrams of L-theanine extracted from green tea, which promotes relaxation. It's actually got effects on the GABA receptors, 200 micrograms, of hyperzine A, which is used for focus, and I'm not gonna list off the rest of them. This is kind of like an energy drink on a whole other level. It's got a mix of some things that you see in pre-workouts in it, I believe. And more importantly, it's got stuff that you would find in nootropic mixes. And they've only got 10 calories. So all of my buddies out there wanting to look good for the summer, this is the way to go. Let's give it a taste test. As I make a disgusted face. No, honestly, that was really good. We got some orange rush. Oh, play on orange crush. I like that. And um, it honestly, for an energy drink that's got no sugar, tastes pretty good. You can pick these up from the link below at gorillamind.com and use the code psyched or more importantly, follow my link to get 10% off and to help support the channel. The more you guys that buy a pack of these energy drinks or any other supplements from their shop, the more money I make. And we're trying to grow the channel right now. So please replace all of your usual, you know, monsters, Red Bulls with Gorilla Mind energy drinks. Anyway, with this video sponsored of the way, let's dive head first into this one. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be pitting head to head a bad mushroom trip versus a bad acid trip. Now, both of these are traditional psychedelic compounds. However, while a bad trip is a bad trip, the nuances and the slight differences in effects, or more so what you're more going to lead towards in terms of where your terror is going to be directed from is going to be exponentially different depending on the compound taken. Now, as always, this video is being done for safety and harm reduction. I don't recommend that anybody watching tries any of these compounds. Best form of harm reduction is always abstinence. And of course the dose makes the poison. And so depending on the dose is also going to depend on what types of negative effects you're going to get. So to make this easy, we're gonna be pitting an average Average dose of my man acid versus an average dose of shrooms. I mean, an average dose could be anywhere depending on potency from two grams of mushrooms to four grams versus the equivalent in acid would be like 100 to 200 micrograms. So those are the doses that we're playing with today and let's dive head first into this one. So first, let's cover the differences in body effects. Now, keep in mind, this is not a comparison video. We're just gonna focus on the differences that will, you know, launch someone to terror when they're having a bad experience. Now, body-wise, there's not much with my man Lucy that is going to really heighten the senses that you get or the feelings attached to terror, unless you really can't stand your skin feeling electric and more sensitive. It does come equipped with a little bit of nausea, but one of the factors for mushrooms that can actually cause people to have their first stages of uneasiness is actually the body discomfort. Mushrooms have a heavier body load, and sometimes people, when they're in that altered state, can confuse the increased nausea attached to mushrooms with, oh my God, there's something wrong with my body. I must be dying. I'm having trouble breathing. Instead, they're not actually having trouble breathing. They're feeling extra pressure on their lungs because they feel kind of gassy. Whereas in the sober state, this gassy feeling could be easily dismissed as just gas, unless you're an old person. We were always bringing my grandma to the hospital because she said she was dying having a heart attack and it was just freaking gas pains. Apparently it's common for people to mistake gas pains with heart attacks, I don't know. But when it comes to mushrooms, those it's not really gas pains, it's more so this deep-seated nausea. And it's not uncommon for people to say that they spent their entire bad mushroom trip over the toilet, either puking or trying to get themselves to puke because they just wanted this nausea to pass. I can attest to this, in the past, having this really strong discomfort inside my body has led me, you know, first you start feeling uncomfortable in your body, which influences your thoughts to go, oh my God, maybe something's wrong, maybe I'm dying, I'm gonna stop breathing. And all of this causes your panic to escalate. So in terms of mushrooms versus acid, mushrooms have more of a body load panic. Again, keep in mind that this list is primarily unique to me and the effects that I've had. Everybody, when they consume these compounds, is going to have a different array of effects, different enzymes that metabolize different compounds in different ways, different body weights, man, woman, different, different, all this different stuff. There's gonna be some you know, similarities, of course, but some people are going to also say, oh my God, mushrooms, I feel no nausea, but on Lucy, I am so nauseous, I feel like I could puke. So again, this list is more so directed to me and what I personally believe to the more common problems. Next, go, let's go on to the mental effects that can cause someone to not only be launched into terror, but can help influence 
their bad thoughts towards bringing them into the pits of hell. Now, the main difference is, in my opinion, with the peak. Now, the peak is when most people are going to experience the most fear if they're fighting the effects and they can't let go control. Now, with mushrooms, it's been defined as it's like being strapped to the back of a rocket ship and just taking whoever wants to go, versus acid is you're in the rocket, you, you know, you're going fast, you can't stop yourself from doing that, but at least you can kind of control and maneuver the experience in a way that you see fit. Meaning, with mushrooms causing a greater lack of control, it does seem for some more common uh, mentally for mushrooms to cause them to have a bad experience. Now, let's just jump ahead and say you're in this bad trip. You're terrified. You feel like you're going to die. Meanwhile, you know, it's just ego death, but you can't tell the difference between the two. You're forgetting things. Your memory is going. What's the main difference between the two? Because they both can cause those same effects. Now, when it comes to the peak, with acid, the experience rises and rises and rises and rises, hits this peak, plateaus there for a little while, and then it dips and dives off. Versus mushrooms look like this. Rising, 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 peak, a dip. Ooh, going back up, and a dip. And oh, here we go, hold on real tight. Woo, falling again. It comes in waves, kind of like, you know, our successes in life. They come in waves. We progress, we regress. It's more aligned with the natural flow of things versus acid generally tends to be this one shot take all. You go up, you go up. There's your one chance to have all the realizations and realize that you're one with the universe and then you come back down. And when you're coming down, it's a, it's generally linear. So as soon as the effects wear off, you can rest assured like, okay, I was panicking, but at least now it's fading versus mushrooms mess with your head. It's like you're freaking out. Can't wait for it to be over. You're, you're saying, where's those damn trip killers? Call me an ambulance, get me to the hospital. And then you're like, oh, I'm getting better. Oh, okay, I can, I can actually, yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's settling down. I can deal with this. I can deal- OH MY GOD! And then it just boom, shoots you right back up. And then you're like, oh my god, this is so bad. And because it comes in waves, it can, I think by its nature, be a little scarier because you feel like it's never going to end. Because every time you think it's ending, it rises back up again and takes you for another fucking loop-de-loop. -loop and you're like, just get me off this goddamn ride already. In terms of, you know, bad trip potential, this is why I often say I think high doses of mushrooms have more bad trip potential. At least it's shorter. So while there's more peaks and troughs with mushrooms, the general experience is over in like four to six hours. You know, some people it could, you could push it to at least eight versus acid can last to eight to 12 hours, depending on dose. Keep in mind, we're talking about an average dose, but with higher doses, like real big doses, some people are feeling it for like 24 hours. It is not unheard of. Again, it depends on the size, on the amount that you freaking shove down your gullet. So with this in mind, well, I think there's more potential for fear. At least that fear isn't as long lived. When it comes to, you know, the acid peak, since it's a longer experience, I think the peak effects generally last a little bit longer too. So well, when it's over, it's over. Well, you're in the fear. And well, you're in that state, time really slows down. Your experience of each moment feels elongated. And I've described this before. It's almost like your brain is thinking so fast that you can perceive more every second than you normally can, making each second feel like it's been stretched further than it's ever been stretched before, making you feel like five minutes is like 10, 20 minutes. And it just, perceptually, it's like, when the hell is this goddamn shit gonna freaking end? So there's the, there's the comparison. Those are the dangerous. Acid, you get a longer peak, longer experience. So if you are experiencing some form of psychosis, bet your ass you're going to be in that for a freaking while, especially considering your perception of time is stretched out versus with the shroomies. Fear, better. Fear, better. You know, you got to ride the waves, but at least they come to an end at a faster pace. Now, when you're in these scared trips, which one is going to be visually? What are the what are the differences visually from you know one bad trip to the other? Now, fortunately, the visuals aren't usually a reason to cause a bad experience. I mean, most people aren't like, oh my god, and then visually I saw my friend turn into Satan. Like usually your mind is already going. But in those rare instances where someone might, you know, be scared by what they're seeing, which one is visually more intimidating? At a similar dose, I mm, 
Yeah, this, this one's honestly hard um, because the visual distortions are similar. Um, people have described the mushrooms as being more organic. Acid is more alien, like you're in a damn spaceship or on a different planet. And I can attest to this. But when you try to break down what does this actually mean, it means with the mushrooms, it, it, it doesn't cause just as many distortions, I don't, I don't think. Like, yeah, things are going to shrink and stretch. You get this breathing motion. You get a little bit of trails. For sure, you see patterns. I've, I've mentioned before, I get this like alien hieroglyphic effect where everything's on the walls. But on an equivalent dose of acid, for a lot of people, it is going to be slightly, I think it's, it depends so much on the individual, but it can be slightly more visually stimulating where the main difference is it's more the colors feel more neon. They're both going to have a vibrance, but the, the perception of colors on mushrooms feels more natural versus your perception of colors on acid feels more, like I said, alien spacecraft. Think of like alien planet with really vibrant, bright greens and blues. And now it's, it's hard to say whether the visuals can really contribute to a bad experience, but um, it's hard to say which one is going to be visually more intimidating. If, if I had to put my finger on one, I would say the acid visuals might be a little bit freakier just because of that alien nature versus at least with mushrooms, it, it just, it still feels like an enhancement of everyday reality. But I don't think the visuals are really a culprit here that's gonna be putting people into bad experiences. It's more so gonna be the physical discomfort that causes the bad experience, and of course, your thoughts. Now, if I had to say out of the two, when you're in a bad trip, which one is more likely to cause PTSD? So for those of you who don't know, a really intense psychedelic experience, especially one that ends in a form of psychosis, can cause post-traumatic stress disorder in some people, and it can full-on traumatize them. So let's say everything is equal. You're having you know, an equally bad trip on both. You can say one was worse than the other. Which one is more likely to cause PTSD? I would probably suggest acid, to be honest. Just because acid is more mentally stimulating and your thoughts feel like they're moving so much faster versus with mushrooms, things can be a little slowed down. And uh, because your thoughts are moving so quick, I believe that acid is more prone to those thought loops. Dude, you have already had all these thoughts. Okay, so I'm in a thought loop. I'll think of something else. You've already tried that and there was nothing else. You gotta ride it out. Oh. Okay. But I've already thought of that. Yeah, dude, because you're in a thought loop. Oh, okay, well then I'll just think of something else. No, you gotta write it out. Remember? Oh, I remember, because I've already had all these thoughts. And these are more likely on acid. Again, because it's more mentally stimulating and you're thinking so much more and thinking faster. Yeah, and those thought loops can really make you feel like you're insane. In that regard, I, I think acid has more potential for PTSD just because the form of psychosis that it causes can feel a little bit more intense. I would say, at least in my experience, I've had both. And when I was having like a psychosis style with mushrooms, it did not last nearly as long. And when it was over, I was like, oh my God, it's over. Versus when I had it with the acid, I was afraid that like part of the trip was never gonna end. Like part of my brain was like, wow, I think some of that's gonna stick with me forever. I'm never gonna be the same again. You know, that thought of when you go crazy on a psychedelic, people are like, is this gonna go on forever? That's actually a fear people have. They take it and their mind is so different and they get scared that they're never gonna be normal again. I feel like that fear is higher uh, with acid, which I think can contribute to it causing, you know, longer or greater chances of PTSD. So yeah, I think that wraps it up. Those are, you know, some of the common reasons for bad trips and some of the differences between bad trips on both compounds. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. And of course, head on over to Gorilla Mind and pick up your very own orange crush, or they got three other flavors, energy drinks. Again, use the code PSYCHED. If you guys want to check out one of our hooded trip blankets, head over to psychsubstance.shop to support these videos. We have the uncut version of this video, which is actually longer, the longer version on our Patreon. Follow the link below to join Patreon, only $2 a month, and you help support the channel. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment for the algorithm, and I'm done bossing you guys around, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.